Welcome along guys. Well the time has come for the beautiful Ninja H2SX to go back to Wheels Motorcycles. Massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for loaning me this beauty for the last 10 days. I've really enjoyed it. But in this video we're going to go through the things I like about the bike, the things I think could be improved about the bike and there's a few things I think could be improved. But if you're interested in one of these bikes, if you're interested in and see what all this supercharger <laughs> business is all about then stick around because we're going to jump on and take this bike out for one last ride and i'll let you know my final thoughts what's it been like to live with roll the intro So before we get into all the details, massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for loaning me this for the last 10 days. I've really enjoyed it. If you, if you want to ride this exact bike, this is one of Wheels Motorcycles' latest demos. So pop down, see them, get yourself a test ride. I've been interested since they came out in 2015 what a supercharged bike would be like to ride. I had a lot of preconceptions I suppose you know I thought it's gonna be mental you know everyone knows it's a 200 horsepower bike 250 foot-pounds 250 Newton meters of torque you know what's it gonna be like what, what's, what noise is it gonna make you know what's it gonna be like to ride on the road what, what's what's the power delivery gonna feel like Whoa, power! The TFT is very nice. I love the having the analog gauges, the analog rev counter and the TFT. For me, that's the perfect combination. I don't think I really like these full TFT displays. I'm not 100% sold on it. I love having an analog rev counter. Perhaps I'm just old school, but I, you can't beat seeing that needle flying. You can just see it. You can see it out your corner of your eye easier as well. I'm sure you can. So I really like the clocks. The clocks are nice, but I think they could be laid out a little bit better. There's a lot of information on there. You've got a boost gauge, which I love. You've also got boost temperature, or you could have engine temperature by going through the different modes. You've got a max lean angle and a live lean angle sensor, but it actually tells you what your max lean angle has been. The only thing I can't seem to find on the on the clocks is you've got, a t you've got a, a fuel gauge, but you don't have any miles per gallon information whatsoever. Kawasaki do an app to get all that other information called the Rideology app, which indicates with the bike via Bluetooth. You can then see information like your miles per gallon. You can also have a map, you know, a, a GPS location. Uh, you can also have set the bike up from the app as well. You can change the mode you want on it. You can change, you know, your electronic suspension. You can dial in extra bit, extra preload into it. So there's quite a lot of things you can do with the app, which is quite nice. I've had a play with it. It's okay. It's not a must-have though. It's not. It's not something you think I must switch that on before this ride. You can live without it. I think it could be a little bit gimmicky, and it could be they're going to add some additional functionality to it, which could make it more of a must-have. But it, it's quite nice to have it. The bike has a USB port on it, so you can connect the USB to your phone and leave that running all the time. Something like the Ultima Add-ons mount out the way mr caravan and you can have all the information right there so it's quite nice you know that'll give you like your miles to empty and that sort of info but you can't seem to find that information on the clocks themselves which is a bit of a shame being tft you'd think you have the option to cycle through and unlock whatever you wanted another thing which is amazing and that's <laughs> that's just reminded me is the brakes the brakes are absolutely incredible There we go! It's got the new Stylema Rembo calipers as seen on the Ducati V4 and the RS V4 1100. But even on a great big 260 kilogram bike like this, 
it still hauls it up incredibly well and that was the biggest thing I wasn't expecting to find with this bike to have such good brakes on it so what's good about this bike there's there's plenty to love with this power delivery is fantastic but it's not groundbreaking you know a thousand my GSXR is faster than this the thing with the power with this, it makes power from about three or four thousand revs and then it just builds and builds like a train. But the best thing to compare it to is a train. It's so quiet, it almost sounds electric. A London tube train <laughs> is what I'd liken it to. But it makes fantastic power, but there's potential there with the supercharger to go to another level with the power. I know Brock's performance has done a little bit of tuning work on these and with a simple slip-on exhaust, an air filter and a remap they're getting 240 brake horsepower at the back wheel just from a simple tune-up and, and, and an exhaust, not even a full system so that's where this has that potential Yes, it's got everything you'd want to cross continents really. I can't think of an extra it, it hasn't got. It's got everything thrown at it, including the kitchen sink, cornering lights which work really well, which are nice at night. I mean if you're going into a corner and, and the light tilts, you, it lights up the road for you with the cornering lights. It's, you know, it's got everything. I can't think of anything else it would need. The LED front light is very, very good. It's LED lighting all round, but it wants to be because this bike isn't cheap. This bike is £21,500. It's an expensive machine. When you add on top of that insurance, the insurance is expensive. I've actually found some companies which won't even quote you if you've got a supercharged vehicle. Um, and it's pricey, tyre wear is going to be expensive so I think this bike is one of those bikes only the, only the wealthy <laughs> need apply it's obviously aimed as, at an older, older guy someone who's given up the sports bikes because they're too uncomfortable they want to do more mileages mileages this is a good compromise on the position it's a sporty ride but it's not too extreme your legs aren't tucked up under you, into, into your armpits too much. You can stay on this for at least a couple of hours without having to get off. That's, that's, that's the beauty of it. It can do that, those back roads. It can give you that performance, but you can also just sit on the motorway and do mile after mile if that's what you want to do. It's a fantastic all-round machine. If I had to choose a bike to go down to the south of France on, in a, on one trip without an overnight just straight down I can't think of a better bike than this to do it on it's quicker than it has any right to be really surging the power 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 and then about eight grand it kicks in again I mean as I said it's not GSXR fast it's not RS34 1100 fast but it's progressive it's train like power the way it builds and it can get you in a lot of trouble because everything is just effortless on this bike you can end up going into corners and approaching corners much faster than you think you're actually doing it builds speed effortlessly and there has been a few times where I've giving it a handful and thought blah why and you're going into the next corner much faster than you thought you would have been because it's all a little bit deceptive the way it builds its speed up and I think that's partly due to the way the power is delivered partly due because the bike is so big and so stable feeling you don't realize you're, you're doing those speeds and I think partly due to electronic suspension because good as it is and you've got different modes, you know, as you change through the, the sport mode, the, the rain mode, the, the road mode, it changes the suspension and how it works, but all of them are a little bit, make you feel a little bit detached from the road. I mean, this bike is designed to cover miles and you're not gonna wanna feel every little indentation in the tarmac if you wanna cover miles. But even in the sport mode, it's just a little bit detached. You can't really tell what the road is doing beneath you. 
you're just almost a little bit too removed from the actual riding experience compared to say riding a sports bike power 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 it's like going into warp drive with the Millennium Falcon <laughs> when you go to hyperspace it's like going into hyperspace when you open this thing up Change its direction amazingly well for such a big bike. Brakes, incredible, one finger braking, even pulling it down from you know relatively high speeds. All the traction control, all of that. Those systems keeping the bike in check, even though it almost does it invisibly. You don't really Feel it doing anything. Wow! Hyperdrive! I guess the point is this bike can do this sort of stuff. There'd be a lot of big tourers like this. Well it'd be out of the question. You wouldn't even try and throw it down a, a, a twisty country lane. This bike can do it. That's the difference. It may not give as much it may not be as rewarding as a sports bike to do it on, but it can do it. And that in itself is impressive. Okay, so what else do I love about it? The power, the brakes. I also love the fact that it is supercharged. I love the fact that it's got that potential to be taken quite easily to be a 240 horsepower bike. That's incredible. I love the noises you get from the, the supercharger as well. That little <laughs> noise from the, from the blow-off valve, which you probably can't hear, but you, you can hear it on my flyby. I love that noise. <laughs> it's worth buying a H2 just for that noise. I think supercharging is a fantastic way of extracting that extra power from the bike. And I really do hope as part of this whole supercharged experiment which Suzuki, of Suzuki that Kawasaki have done, that that filters down to the smaller bikes. Because imagine the, imagine the ZX6R with a supercharger, it would be putting out 1000cc superbike performance but from a 600cc package and the weight of a 600cc bike, I think there's potential there for something truly incredible you'd imagine with all that performance the fuel consumption is going to be pretty terrible well I've been surprised actually how good this is, how good it is I think for this year Kawasaki have made some changes to this and to try and get better fuel mileages is one of the changes they've made. I went out down to Weymouth with my buddy Andy on his, he's got an S1000 single R and this was using in between fill ups where we both had an exactly full tank we stopped at the next petrol station and this used £10.50 and his bike was like £10.10 .10. so it was only slightly more thirsty than his S1000 single R. So it, I was quite surprised at that because I was really expecting this to drink heavily and that's with a lot of right wrist as well. That's not just cruising, that was with a lot of throttle. So surprisingly good on fuel economy. From the app, I think it said I was getting about 36 miles per gallon, which is about, I think this is actually better on petrol than my GSX-R. You know, that, that is quite impressive for a 1,000cc supercharged engine. Super easy to fill as well. You just put it in full power. <laughs> There's no feeding it in gently. It'll just take it. Take the full power, the full squirt. No mucking. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and watching this review. It wouldn't be possible without Wheels Motorcycles, so I have to say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles. If you're looking for a bike, give Wheels a ring. Have a look at their website. I'll put a link on the screen. They're a Suzuki dealer, obviously a Kawasaki dealer, Aprilia, uh, Mutt Motorcycles, and many others. I can't even remember. <laughs> Multi-franchise. So if you're looking for a bike, have a look at their site. Do you a great deal. Tell them Chop sent you and you may even get a bit more money off. <laughs> there we go guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to ride this exact bike, 
give wheels a call because this is their demo so this will be back with them now so if you want to ride a h2 give them a call get your ass on this let me know what you think if you do ride it because i'm always interested to know this is power level one which is full power Absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. 